Hello and welcome to another thrilling copy of the Reservoir Red Dogs magazine. Inside this fortnight's issue you'll find a free swizzle stick, six cool stickers and a glossy poster of your favourite forest legend. Uh, what bit am I meant to read, Matt? <laughs> and a glossy poster of your favourite forest legend. <laughs> Me, Paul McGregor. And what a poster it is. There I am in my forest kit celebrating that goal against Leon over 20 years later in a St Anne's pub car park. <laughs> Matt, I think you're on this poster too. There you are, look, slumped outside that chip shop with your sausage in your hand. Oh, I, mean, that I don't remember sausage. that being taken. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the present day. We're joined by a forest icon who might be the most requested guest we've had in the history of the show. Definitely. One of our most iconic strikers of the modern era. A man whose amazing ability took us to the brink of the Premier League. He scored 55 goals in 141 starts for the Reds. It's Marlon Harewood. Yes, Mar. Marlon, yeah. welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. It is no exaggeration to say that I think you're probably one of the most talked about guests we've had. Okay. And one of the most requested from, from fellow Forest fans. OK, that's nice. You have since very, we started. Since we started, everyone's <clears> been like, you've got to get Marlon Harewood on. And Andy Reid and David Johnson said it. And you're the, in terms of fans, the most requested, I would say, guest. Decent. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, were you aware that you had such a special place in Forest fans' hearts? Um, no, not really, because I've been Forest since I was young. So I didn't really see it like that. It's like I've got Forest in hearts like I've lived there and I'm born in London. So it's like I've... Born and bred in Nottingham. So when you first came to... I remember seeing you, just as a fan, constantly pitch side with what must have been like the youth team, you know, before games yeah. and out of the pitch. We should do stretcher bearers. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think a lot of us was aware of you before you broke into the first team. Yeah. But you were there at the same time Macca was, really, at this incredible period where Forest were a Premier League force. Yeah. What was it like as a, as a young lad... To be around a club with those big personalities there. Oh, it was big at the time, to be fair, because it was, it was totally different to what it is now because it was a reserve team. So all the players that weren't playing in the first team used to play in the reserves and that's what, as a young lad, you want to be in the reserves. We yeah. weren't even thinking about first team because it was such a... to be a resi reg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a high level that to get there, but just to be in the re reserve team was good. And what was your experience of some of those? So, I mean, Stuart Pearce was there. I mean, Chris Bart Williams, Kevin Campbell, like... Big Premier League stars. Did you chat? Did you have the guts to chat to them, or what's the what's the relationship? Uh, like? Yeah, to be yeah, fair, did, I yeah. did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was the the London in me being confident in talking to the lads, but to be fair, they had some top class players there, and they were quite open and they, they wanted to talk to you and help you. And Brilliant. when I look back now, I think I feel quite privileged because they were top class players back then. And thinking about it now, I don't think young lads can even think about going to talk to a, young, a senior player now without um, getting a good response. And the first team back then, they used to look after us, to be fair. I have to, I have to say as well, just uh, to cut in there, yeah. Moore was really, really well liked in the first team room. He was really well liked because he just had that, that, just that swagger about him. Yeah. And just that you, you could tell he was going to, going to come through the game and, and be something special because the supreme confidence as a centre forward as well. You know, and given his frame, it was like, well, if he can do a bit, he's going to go. He's going to go on. So, in in terms of your two's relationship, then you were in the first team before Marlon, but were you yeah. a similar age? Did you ever play together you, in a Mark? youth team? Um, Thirty nine. Like? Thirty nine. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you were my boot boy, right? Yes. No yeah. way. Yeah. And what was Paul like to do the boots? Was quality. He was quality. It was a bit crazy. Because <laughs> he. What sort of crazy? Just like rock crazy. You know, you get those type of people. We. Maka was like that kind of rock rock star sort of person and the way he used to dress and his hair. He looks quite good now, to be fair. <laughs> he does, yeah, Thank smart you. Thank so, you. Um, Appreciate it. But he, he was quite crazy back then. But was he generous? He was wicked. He was really? Wicked. I had... Uh, I had Maka, Kevin Campbell, and Pia van Hoydonk. So I wow! Best. So obviously wow. strikers looking after strikers. And they, Christmas time was good for me because they <laughs> used to look yeah. after me. Used to get money at Christmas. So I had to, to try and match cams. You had and to what, make sure the boots is all clean. So Campbell yeah. was quite generous then? Very. Campbell was wicked. Yeah. What about Van Hooydonk? Uh, he was all right. <laughs> he was a bit it was a bit hard work, to be yeah. fair. But he, he, his boots were massive. He had like size 13 <laughs> feet. So wow. the old school preds that just... Take him to the boat now. club around the corner and get them clean. Oh, God. <laughs> but he could strike a ball, to be fair. But oh, would yeah. they deliberately have a striker looking after a striker? I'm not sure. Yeah, because yeah, Spuggy used to look after... Piercy, yeah. yeah. John Robertson did Ian Story Moores. Wow, Johnny Owen tells there that that John Robertson did Ian Story Moores. That's like when you hear those stories about Johnny Marr lending Noel Gallagher a guitar, and yeah, like these sort of guitars exist that 
two great bands have written songs on. That's incredible. So who <laughs> did your boots then? Did anyone come through that ended up? No, it on? stopped. It stopped after that when I came through. So you were sort of the last generation, really, yeah, that had yeah. that sort of proper apprenticeship. Yeah, I did my own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I looked after quite a few, to be fair, when some of the lads weren't away because I used to travel with the first team. So I had to sort their boots out sometimes when they're not clean. And some people used to forget their boots. Um, I don't know. If really, did really say when he was here no. last time? No, what? Really forgot to put boots in. <laughs> Oh, mate. Feel free to stitch Reedy up, by the way. So, oh, <laughs> so I used to travel with them and I used to sort their, help them sort the boots out and carry skips and I think lads don't really do that anymore, which I think is, is not good because you like learn your trade and being with the first team, looking after staff and that's where I grew up from and I, I loved it, to be yeah. fair. When I look back, I, I, I appreciate everything they've done for me and yeah. just learning the chain of respecting things and just staying behind and it's a big I, word that mate respect isn't it when you oh, when you come in through it's massive and yeah. I, I to be fair I do that everywhere I've been through my career yeah so like people look at me funny when I'm lifting skips and I'm a first team player and I'm like, yeah. like I'm just just normal just to help you just yeah. to get it off like the driver and stuff and he thanks me and I was like you don't need to thank me it's just a it's just a normal thing for me so yeah. I think it helps helps you grow as a person going through your career and I think Matt you'll find it interesting that, that that's not every single club. I mean, that is that is something particular to a Forest DNA as well. That's really good to hear, though, from a fan's point of view, because you want Forest to be like that, and you want it to be warm and friendly, but you mm. also want a sense that the players earn a, a you know a sense of respect. Well, we've touched on it before, haven't we? That Forest were all about. You, you felt the sense coming through that you were being raised as a young man, yeah, not just as a young footballer. Yeah, which I've I've genuinely carried with me throughout my whole life, and it sounds like you have, and an awful lot of the young lads that came through that generation, uh, that generation, yeah, uh, did. So, did you have any experiences with Cluffy, or was that was that just the wrong era for you? Uh, no, I did because that year he um, he retired or stopped um, yeah. from Forest. I signed. So I, I saw him, I met him a couple of times when I was coming up. So I used to get the train every weekend to play games, come up on Saturday, play games on a Sunday, and then get the train back to London. Yeah. Um, and some of the times I used to see him because we used to, sometimes Forrest used to be at home on a Saturday, so we used to watch the game and then go to the hotel and then we used to play our games at Boots on a Sunday. Yes. So I used to see him, but I never really, like, really talked to him or anything so like that. So he never gave you any sort of pearls of wisdom? No, no. But I used must... to be scared, though, to be fair. He, he scared the, you? Yeah, just all the stories and stuff <laughs> yeah. that people used to say. Yeah. But they, they the, the stories used to say, but they used to think highly of him, very highly of him, yeah. just how the person he was. Because he couldn't do half the things that he, he was doing back then now. No. He'd be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> to a lot of people. 90% of it, I think. <laughs> so you're coming through the Forest Youth System. I mean, in terms of a, a precocious young talent, were you impatient to get in the first team? I don't know. It's weird when you're obviously sitting there looking back. It it didn't really happen like that. It's just like, because our youth team was amazing. We had some great yeah. young lads in our youth team and we were such a tight, great brunch. I think that's why we did so well years to come. Mm. Um, and because I had Frank Clark um, was putting me through playing in the first team. Then obviously Frank left them, Dave Bassett come in because we had such a, a small group now because it's so different now because you have like, we had first year, second year, third year pros and yeah. then reserved in first team. But now it's looking how it is. He's got all the ages, under 23s, yeah. and then you've got the first team. It's totally different. So you like get bedded into that. So as soon as you get into the reserves, you're sort of like a fringe of a first team player. Yeah. So when you're traveling and stuff like you travel with a squad and right. even if you're not getting used, you're still traveling, you're involved in it. And I didn't yes. really, when I look back now, I think, oh, wow, I'm like, th that was big back then. Yeah. So it's, it was quite easy. That Not naivety easy, but of youth, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You just think, like, I felt like I should have been there just because of my ability and my size and how I yeah. think because the first team made me so welcome. So I didn't really think about it like that. That's but, so good to hear because it is, I mean, maybe it is a generational thing. Like, you, there is a, and it perhaps would be wrong, you know, we'll talk to footballers in 20 years' time who played in this era who yeah. are a, a fine, um, you know, uh, young gentlemen who value playing for football and value, yeah. you know, how privileged they are in society. But it's so nice to hear that at Forest, I mean, compared to other clubs you yeah, later played at. It's a generation, though. Like, thinking now where we're talking, I think they helped me even more so, made it comfortable for me, taking that step up. Because when I look back now, I think, Jesus, that was a massive step up. And it's funny, isn't it? even at a high level, like when you look at certain players, you just think, oh, you're robbing a living. 
I wouldn't say it like that, but yeah. <laughs> you should say it. You know what I mean, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's yeah. a bit harsh. But there, there are players, even at that high level, but you yeah. just think, uh, but coming through with Forrest, you knew everybody was comfortable on that football. Yeah. It's a massive step up. Like, obviously, all the ban- banter aside, um, when you step on that pitch, uh, the first team players back then, if you made a mistake, they're letting you know. Yeah. So you, you have to be on point in every situation because I don't think you can do that now because lads are banter back, shout back and stuff. Because like if Sh- uh, Stuart Pierce is wrapping that ball into me, I'm making sure I get hold of it because if I don't get hold of it, I know after or in half time or full time, he's coming for me. So I'm making sure when that ball comes into me, I'm holding it. Yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm just like making sure. So that, that thought process is like the respect to that player because yeah. like he's top class player. And when when he sees something and he's passing that ball to me, I'm, I'm making sure I'm doing something yeah. with it. And that's how I went on through my career really with, with all of them. Mm. Learning from Pierre van Hoedonk, even he helped me along the way. If I did something in the game, it would come to me. Because I remember sometimes in a, a corner or if I've done a run, I've got a corner. He'll say to me, well done, well done. Next time, just look up and do little things to help Brilliant. me along the way. So it's it was sort of easy when I really look back at it. So who are your mates? that When you're coming through that system or, or even in the time of your first team, who are the players you're most fond of from your time at Forest? Oh, God, there was loads. Um, I used to talk to Macca all the time. I used to talk to Alan Rogers. Chris Butt Williams, Kevin Campbell, Chets, Norm. Yeah. Um, Who were the more outrageous? The outrageous in what way? Well, either eccentric or. Um, oh, the, ban- the banter in the changing yeah. room was, 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 was dickless. I don't, <laughs> I don't think they can do that this nowadays. Not a chance because they're getting big trouble. <laughs> but the banter in the changing room was just scary. It was brutal, wasn't yeah. it? Because then even Dino came in as well. Yeah. That oh, made it even man. worse. <laughs> Because Dino, Dean yeah. Saunders, oh yeah, yeah. God, he's the funniest man I've, probably the funniest man in football, I think, yeah. that I've met. Um, he was amazing. Just naturally funny, like yeah. got funny yeah. bones. Piercy was serious, so yeah, I can you, imagine. Couldn't, you couldn't <laughs> He had a good around. sense of humour, though. When it, when, yeah, when he wanted to, but yeah. when it's time to be serious, he was serious. Yeah. Like, you knew not to talk to him. <laughs> in, in terms of nights out, then, because every Forest generation has its haunts, and it turns out for your generation, it was the market bar and places like that. Yeah. Where, where, what other places would you go on a night out in Nottingham? Um, Isis. Can you remember Isis? Isis, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was the best night out. Because to be fair, like I said, the team, they used to go out together. I think it's so important because yeah. they had such a good team bonding. They look after each other. And because I think I was the only one that went, we went to America on tour and I was the only one there. I went, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. I went allowed out because of the age restriction. And of course, Barty and Cam, Scotty Gemmell, they will sneak me out. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, so, like, little things like that. And them things I, I will cherish. The stories back from to, Miami, mate, were oh, just God. ridiculous. Jono. Oh, my God. So, are, there, jo- are there things that we can talk about on here? Or are they- <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will come back to haunt me big time. <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, I imagine it was more like a holiday than a than a training experience, was it? It'd be both, because lads knew when to have fun and look after yeah. each other, and it's time to let loose and enjoy. But then when there's time to play, they used to play, because we had like Stoney, Woney, they, they're all top quality players, yeah. and the fitness levels was a joke, to be fair, especially Stoney and he, he, he loved a little drink. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Oh, of course I can right, now, yeah. really. Yeah, but mate, but, training, if you were running the next day, you knew Stoney would be at the front, absolutely oh, pounding it. That's what I mean. Unbelievable. So, all of them was like, they knew. And what was his poison, Stoney? I'm not sure, but he can drink. I know that. <laughs> 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 he could put a few back. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've heard from various players about McDonald's black cards. Yeah. Did you have one? No. How not? I went in that... that that first team. No way. No, no. They, to be fair, Bartman used to sort everyone out <laughs> with everything. Yeah, he, he can get everything. And yeah. He used to sort everyone out. Like I, like I said, the change room back then, when I think back, it was awesome. The lads looked after each other yeah. in yeah. every in every way. I just, I'm always, and it sound, it's maybe it's the sort of thing a fan would ask and not an ex player, but what sort of perks did you get at Forest? Like, did you get a free car or free suits and things like that? Uh, I can't remember. I think the lads did, um, like flannels. I think they got like free suits and stuff like yeah. that. Um, we knew all the boys that worked in the shops, didn't we, and stuff. So yeah, they got a lot of stuff free. To I be remember fair. sorting us out with some Smithy suits. Oh. Don't get it. Weren't all good, to be fair. Because <laughs> serious, they let you know. Because I remember one time I said something to. Oh, oh, 
Cam's or Bartman. Um, I can't remember what happened. And they made me run around the pitch naked. <laughs> Mate, I, I had that. What? So it's not all, they let you know. If you <laughs> spat chat or something like that, they make sure because obviously it's like the respect factor and used to, they used to put like, all stuff in a shower. If you're having a shower on your own, they get the hose pipe and hose you down. <laughs> yeah. All sorts of things. So it's not all, it's just learning your trade, I think, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Naked yeah. <laughs> so on the city ground pitch or the training ground? City ground pitch. Because we used to get changed there. We used to walk down to boots. Yeah. And they'd, they'd make you run around naked. Yeah. And that was kind of normal. And you couldn't argue. <laughs> Oh, and by the there, way, there was there, no there'd arguing. be a tour in the stand as well, just walking around and <laughs> there stuff. There was no arguing, <laughs> no nothing. You literally, whatever they say you do, you do. <laughs> so you, you've been at Forest for quite a few years. You broke into the first team in 98 under Dave Bassett. But it was the Paul Hart era where you really came to life and, and had your best time at Forest. And that season that we, t- I mean, we talk about it in such a bittersweet way. And some people, I think, I think Andy Reid almost didn't want to talk about that season because the way it ended and the, the disman, you know, dismantling of that great side. Yeah. But it was a phenomenal season. The football was great. And you and DJ up front, I mean, it's one of the best ever striking partnerships that Forrest have yeah, ever it had. It was decent. It was phenomenal. Yeah, it's like, I keep saying it, but you're making me think back and it, it was so good. Cause I think we like scored over 50 goals yeah, between us. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, can you can you buy that now? In the, I know, yeah. In it the was out of this like world how good you both were. It was so good. You scored four against Stoke. Yeah, in the first half. <laughs> Not bad, huh? <laughs> Some of those games were just... It must have been... I mean, was that the highlight of your career? Well, I say it was a highlight. My highlight yeah. of my career was at West Ham because yeah. do what I did in the Premier League, obviously course, you want to play yeah. at the highest level. But, I, but Forrest was like... I had some really, really good times at Forrest. And I think the way Paul Hart needs a amount of praise, really. He gets what he a lot did, on this show. What he yeah. did to the lads and how we come through and how he trained and what he w- wanted to do because he's give us a lot of confidence to go and do what we did we had a young side yeah and some of the lads like were quite under underestimated and um undervalued and they they did well because our team we just gelled together we had everyone in the right places and me and Jono was just enjoying scoring goals basically and Jono came in at a right time at a fee and he, he was quality to be fair yeah, Jono yeah. and he was one of them players that you can had an understanding of me and him so it was good to be up at, playing alongside him and learning off him to be fair it was exceptional, though, the, the sort of instinct that you had for each other, as well mm. as a phenomenal midfield that, that kept a, a, a great service. Yeah. But it was still up to you to, to put those put those chances away. Yeah. I mean, some of those games... I mean, we often talk about the Sheffield United semi-finals, mm. as, you know, particularly the second leg at, at Bramall Lane as a very difficult thing to reminisce about. Yeah. Um, but I didn't I, even know, because I got, I got knocked out in the first half. That's right. And then I, I went home and... The next following morning, I'm I'm like celebrating because I'm thinking <gasps> no! we got into the final. Wow! And then oh. I got told that uh, that's mad. We lost. And then I was like, "How did you lost? Like, like Des scored a home goal, didn't he? Oh. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So, oh, and the oh. Chaser, didn't you, even you're know. like concussed and yeah. Oh, mate, didn't even know. And then till the next day, and then that was it. Do you think that, because yeah. Forest, where Forest were in the kind of in their history do you think that team was always destined to be picked apart no matter how good it was yeah because if if, if that team were playing back when i was playing mm. that that there's a possibility that, that team could have been held together and gone on to yeah, do, do exactly what it should have gone yeah. on to do but because forest were where they were they were the sort of team at that time where you're going to pick off yes. your yeah. best players. If we if we had another year with that team i think we would have got promoted oh, yeah. and done really well <sighs> yeah. i think we would have won the but league because so many players just like there's probably about six or seven of us like disappearing to like top clubs. Big clubs, yeah. Like Dors, JJ, Reedy, yeah. they all like went to Spurs, yeah. Newcastle, yeah. And big fees as yeah, well. Yeah, so no. have you kept any of your shirts from Utah yeah, Forest? Have. Yeah, I've got them all. Have you got any of them framed? Yeah, they're all framed. Oh, amazing! All yeah, yeah, amazing. Are they up in your garage? Not your no, they're AC all down 13. now because I'm I'm um, moving house. But yeah, I've still got them all framed and stuff. Oh, good man. Well, we should we should mention the business you do now. It's had a lot of uh, national media attention. AC thirteen, is that right? Yeah, and it's uh, wrapping cars. Yeah, it's which a, is it's one of the things we do. It's was more bespoke bespoke situation where you come to us and we spruce up your car and make it look good. And yeah. you have a lot of clients that are footballers. Majority of them are, yeah. Because the pictures are, uh, I've seen, I think it was on the Daily Mail website, beautiful. The shirts you've got on the wall on the of back wall. Yeah. It's, I mean, that is from a fan's point of view. 
That's the sort of house I want. Yeah, it's decent, <laughs> That's sort of house full yeah. of football <laughs> shit. We don't really see it like that because some of them are good friends as well now. Yeah. Um, we look after them quite well because we've got a little bit of a lifestyle company as well to yeah. help them and guide them in that sense oh, and great. anything they need, tickets and stuff. So we do that. I've got a 4-4 four, four smart car. Anything you can do with that? Yeah, we could do whatever you want with a car. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get a Reservoir Red Dogs wraparound logo uh, on No, it. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so what, in terms of going on to do that after playing then, Yeah. What led you to that? Like, what, and what other options did you have? Um, it was um, when I joined West Ham. I, I uh, obviously do get a nice contract. I wanted a nice car, so I got a, a Porsche Carrera Four. Um, and nice. yeah, then after six months, I had to get rid of it. I needed a bigger car, and then I realised I had to pay over the odds to get out of it after six months. And no one told me that at the beginning. No. Um, so, and then I, one of my best mates, Andy Cole from Nottingham, who I form a really good relationship with him, we just said, uh, he wanted to go on and do better things and do things for yourself. And I said, why don't we just open a company? And it's just been going since probably 10 years now. Brilliant. Man. While I've been playing, um, he's been doing it. And then the last couple of years, I just thought to myself, like, it, football was getting a bit, I was getting a bit upset in football and how things were going and stuff. Not for me, just yeah. for the whole sort of systems. I just said, oh, it's time for me to put face to the company. And that's it, really. And it's just gone come quite well the last three that's years. That's interesting. So what was, what was it about football generally that was... Just all the politics, really, that you, as a senior player, you start seeing and you get players coming to you and asking questions and you're trying to help them and you're advising them and then what you're telling them is just not... People's doing the absolute opposite or well, you just know what normality is and situation, but he's just getting situations just weren't happening. And then, obviously, I didn't want to go further, further down. The older you get, you keep going down the... the go down the leagues I didn't want to go further down and just wanted to keep my body because touch wood I had a not a really serious injury and I've looked after myself quite well for my career I just wanted to keep that and then obviously I had my company to to, to go good and man so when you talk about great. you know advice given do you mean stuff like technical advice about playing everything, football everything or life off the pitch stuff you know life. looking after your finances everything and mental health yeah, and yeah. things like that yeah everything it started getting to me so that's why I, I thought you know what I just want to stay out of this and try and help people by being not a footballer so if they want come to me I can help them and do and and act on it so if there's like because with my lifestyle company I can literally if someone had mental health I can yeah. guide them to someone because I have someone a partner that's partner onto my lifestyle company that will help them in that way and in every situation so well, it's I've never nice heard to, no to do, that. do you think anyone talk like that I mean, I'm sure there's always been a, a requirement for it. And obviously, as a society, we're becoming more mature and understanding about mental health now, yeah. let alone football. But do you think there is... Have you noticed a sort of greater demand for that sort of thing from footballers? Yeah, it is. Um, it, it's hard, really, because you're in such a bubble as a footballer, you don't really see the real world until, yeah. the real world until you come out of it. I was in such a bubble, I didn't really think about it. It gives you a slap, doesn't it? You just, yeah, you just <laughs> think about it. But to yeah. be fair, I had something to fall back on because yeah. of my company, and I was like... Wherever I go, I used to help the lads. Do you want a car? Yeah, we used to sort them out of cars. So you know, every, every club I've been to, it's just like talking to them. Like, you see the lads talking about a car. It's like, I can do it. I said, yeah. So I, I used to, so literally every club, and it's just gone from there to every club I've been to, and I helped them out. And then, then it's just gone from a situation where I'd like to help them even more. But then in mental health, tickets, clothes, um, holidays and stuff like that, just to make sure they get looked after. Because obviously a footballer, when people see footballers, they obviously put an extra pound on it and yep. it's uh, sometimes not nice. So that's why uh, we, we've opened a lifestyle to advise and help that's them in amazing. the best way. Brilliant. I didn't realise that was part of it. That's so important. Yeah, it's massive. It's massive. And I, I, it's enjoyable as well because I take it and I can help them and I get to, I'm still in it. But I'm not, if you understand. Yeah. So it's quite nice because I, I, I do miss playing when I go to games. But when I'm not at a game or anything like that, I don't, I don't miss it at all. Yeah, being I'm honest, the same. I miss, I miss the ninety minutes. Quite enjoy my company. Yeah, brilliant, mate. That's great. I mean, I miss the ninety minutes, but don't yeah. miss any of the nonsense around it. No. So do you still train at all? Not really. I, pl I try to, but <laughs> I'm that, that busy at the moment. I we played the other day, Mar, didn't we? We had a little charity oh, match. Yeah. The other so mate. where was this? Eastwood Town's ground. And what was the game? It was for footprints, wasn't it? Yeah. And so who else played? Um, just... Mark Stallard. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ex-county pretty... player. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was player, decent Stallard. as well. He's yeah, a great he player. Good, I used to play up front with him for Little Over Dazzlers years yeah. and years ago, so it was like winding back the clock. Well, he was in that great side they had with like Darren Caskey and players like that. Yeah, he's a cracking That was player, really Stallard. good side county. Had good lad as well. So what other Forest players were there? There's me, Maka, um, 
Boppy, Eugene Bopp. Oh my god. Yeah, Craig. Craig Westcar. Oh Westcar! Few, yeah. A few I lads going away at Rotherham. That he's trying to bring together to try and play. But it was a good turnout. Yeah. Very and good did turnout. you two play alongside each other? Or no, I act, they actually stuck me on the Notts County side. No. Yes. yes. That's why I played up front with Stan. How did that feel? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a shame you didn't get to partner each other up front. Yeah, no, we'd have done no. some damage more. Would have. And did, did you both score? Tell, tell him about tell him about my goal. It was <clears> all right. <throat> tell him about my goal. It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> Would you want to tell you, us about it? No, I don't like to talk about my goals. How many did you score? One. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's about the quality, <laughs> no more. One else it's about... <laughs> yeah. It was good. Talk us yeah. through it. We then, won, Paul. though. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, it mate, just, I want to hear mate, about it. Mate, it was just a little nonchalant outside of the boot from the edge of the box. Just don't worry. It outside of the right boot? Yeah. Top yeah. corner? No. I was no. quite surprised, to be fair. <laughs> don't be like that. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's not done one of that in his career. <laughs> it was a great strike. <laughs> outside, it was like, That's whoa. Everyone point. went, whoa. whoa. And how do, you, you know, you do these? Uh, I'm sure we must occasionally do these charity games. Do you still, in terms of your fitness and your touch and things yeah. like that, you don't do you lose find... that. No, no, because I still scored a hat trick. So <laughs> you don't, you don't lose all those sort of things. And yeah. I should have scored more, but you don't lose the touch or anything like that. It comes back to you as the game goes on. And you as we were it. playing, all the other players, the the the, the players that hadn't played ex- hadn't played pro. Yeah. They're all just saying, "Look at look at the movement of like, it's, yeah." But you like, literally go and stand three yards that way, yeah, and they're like, "Wow!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's so true. What fans don't. Really, I played in some charity game at Carlton Town once um, with a couple of Labour people and a couple of Trent FM people or whatever it was, and, and it was um, was it Ian Richardson who was the county captain for a while back in the day. I think he was part of that Stallard and Kasky okay. era. And and two lads who played for Carlton or Arnold Town or something like that, mm. and playing with them. Made me realise, even just with Carlton Town football, I, I, the intelligence required, the sporting intelligence to play football, was something I'd never appreciated before. The positioning, they were just always there. They were always open. They could read the game so well. That's they, when I shut people down when they start talking inc- about football as not being intelligent. It it's like, incredible. go and do what they do. It is it's a so different hard. intelligence. It is, massively. It is incredibly intelligent. Because we could have tell when, when I came off and a few other lads come off, how many times they were offside. Yeah. They were like eager yeah. to get through to score a goal. Like, offside, <laughs> offside, <laughs> <laughs> offside. <laughs> Whereas all, you're, you're, just, you by, by just you being in the right position yeah. would keep yeah, three or line. four of them on side. Yeah. Although I do remember, I think in the Paul Hart season, I remember you being offside a few times, Marl, and there was a few. Uh... Yeah, I do remember. <laughs> yeah, I, was a bit, I was a bit eager then. That's a different situation. <laughs> I remember. I was, remember. I can't remember what the game was, and it might have been more than one game. But I think you and Andy Reid would argue from time to time on the pit. And it, oh yeah, it was sort of weird to play Andy Reid up front anyway, because of his, you know, statue. His, his, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good word. <laughs> So what the nature of those disagreements then is that just two mates in the heat of the moment would that carry on off the pitch or was it just no, you leave it on the pitch no that, well that, that's the good thing that we had as well as at Forest it literally what's on the pitch stays on the pitch yeah and then when you come off it's, it's all gone because it's gone you can't do anything about it afterwards obviously you can talk about rectifying situations and how yeah. better we can do but once it's on the pitch it's on the pitch it doesn't um... and partly that's what the drinking culture was for a little bit as well because. You get you get in the pub afterwards. Two pints in, you got your arms around each other, and yeah. you're having a laugh. Ah, uh, yeah. Was there still a? I mean, ISIS was one of the places you went to, market bar places like that. Yeah. Like, how would? Because I remember seeing. Matt, if I just stop you, you need to explain ISIS because you know, obviously, some. Of you... <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a very good point from Johnny. Do need the to book. explain ISIS? The Magic Nowers book. <laughs> I think we had covered this in a previous podcast, but just in case you haven't listened to the entire back catalogue, <laughs> ISIS was the name of a Night nightclub. Club. That used to be called the Black Orchid. Yes. But it's now, it's now an, a, just a, a, an empty shrine to, yeah, a, I can't to a bygone that. era of... But that's what I mean. Era is, I don't think you're allowed to do that anymore. No. It was so good you in were, there. The, yeah, it was great. But you were... So when you went and went on to do what you did in the Premier League, was mm. that culture still there or was that... Because you're on that kind of precipice, as you said already, that you went from it being a kind of a drinking culture to forest. Yeah. Did that continue? Was that the same at West Ham, or was it a little? Was it a lot more professional? Because it, it was all about the gym then, wasn't it? Yeah, it was about... yeah, yeah. It was a lot more professional at first because um, it was weird. Actually, it's a good question. The, the, the team I went into, um, West Ham, they 
just got relegated from obviously the Premier League um, and they had That's Jermaine right, Defoe yeah. Yeah. or yeah. David James Michael Carrick and all these players top players wow. so then obviously they got filtered out because because they're top class players and they went went everywhere but then Pards got him his sort of people that he needed and then that sort of Forest situation happened at West Ham and that's where we've done so well with the so 40, you, you attribute going out with the lads yeah. to you getting back in the Premier League yeah we, we wow. was like it's interesting three isn't times it? a it's week it's massive uh, you came back to Forest on like oh, we should cover actually because I, I know a lot of people and I felt very emotional at the time and it's something you deserve great credit for because it was a very difficult game to play in but when you were playing for West Ham in the first game against Forest since Brian mm-hmm. Clough died, I remember you scoring and, and markedly not celebrating. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone in the ground resented you scoring at all. It must have been a hard game for you to play in that. It was a hard game. It was a hard game. It was weird, really. The atmosphere been there so Been there for so long, because yeah. for 10 years I was there, and then sort of coming back and going into the away dressing room, which I used to live in, yeah. um, just walking out, seeing all the lads and the fans giving me like a, a round of applause, which was, was so grateful and it's like nice to come back to someone and some of the players that I was with in my dressing room obviously they then they can look at me and say oh ooh, Marlon was well thought of here yeah and then that went out the window as soon as you cross the line you've got a job to do yeah and I, I wanted to better myself so I have to score goals every time I play absolutely yeah and then I, obviously I, I scored and then uh I'm just showing the respect to the fans just it's, walking uh, to the line. It's a moment I'll never forget that with a real sense of respect between you and the fans. Like it was a real mutual thing that. Um, because what I remember about that day, I don't, were you there for that game? No. It made me realise you know, the music you have in football stadiums before kickoff, it's usually sort of chart stuff or whatever mm. or indie Brit pop thing. You just take that as a given that that's always the music you hear in football stadiums. It sort of washes over you. That game, they played like. Matt Monroe, Frank Sinatra, they played all of Cluffy's favourite music before kickoff, And it was just the most haunting, bizarre thing to be in a football stadium listening to, like, My Way and Somewhere Beyond the Sea and stuff like that. It complete... I've never remembered... And there was, there was a bloke near me who used to have a season ticket near me in the trend and Skinhead covered in tats, just weeping before kickoff. And they had that table that's on the pitch. With great all the cups memory. Yeah. That's, that's a really good memory. I was like, I can't, I've never, because a minute silence in a football stadium is incredible. It's one of those powerful things I think yeah. you'll ever experience. Mm-hmm. It must be bizarre as players, but just have all those people there quiet. It's incredible. But that before that Clough game, I don't think I've ever, I mean, even think, I don't think I ever realised how emotional I felt about it until now. I've never experienced that in a football stadium before. No. It was haunting. It was like this was almost like an altar. It was like a church service. Now, city city ground got some good memories. When when that place is rocking, it's uh, rocking. Yeah, it's just trying to bring it bring it back now. Really, do you, do you come back can. much? To Forest I, games? I coach, so oh, brilliant. Um, at Forest, yeah, and I yeah. try to get down to as many games, and I'm an ambassador for them as well to do a lot of talks as well for a couple of games. And you must get you must get a good reaction from the fans at Forest. Yeah, no, it's, it's really good. It's really good. I just talk to them and just have good conversations with all the fans to be fair it's nice because not every player has that relationship with the fans you know the, I mean I, 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 I'm not thinking of anyone specifically you thought I was going to go at you then didn't you no you're an icon at Forest so you don't, oh, need, yeah. to, you don't need to worry yeah. about that but obviously I mean I, I I respect anyone who ever wore the shirt even if it was like for five minutes in a reserve game I just think it's he's so... not kidding as well he would lose his stuff I just think it's incredible. anybody that's like anyone who's ever up. played professional football let alone for it I just think it's I remember we did a thing it was the 40th anniversary fairly recently of Forest beating Liverpool in the first round of the uh, of the European Cup now the Champions League so we did a thing on Forest's Twitter feed where I went on the pitch with Gary Burtles and Colin Barrett and recreated a goal yeah. and I remember saying to Gary Burtles and I don't think I'll ever forget this I was like you've got to remember for a fan's point of view to even be on the pitch is incredible it's like this yeah. magical place I was like I, I feel standing on the centre circle now like the first time I saw the Statue of Liberty <laughs> It's like, that's a proper fang, isn't it? What yeah. is wrong with you? It's, like, it's just great. I was like, yeah, but it's, it's different, Gary. Like, 
all my hopes and dreams of my life, you know, all the best moments of my life happened here. And you're standing on it. Now I'm standing on this, uh, like, sacred place. It was almost like going to, like, Jerusalem. Do you know what I mean? Like, there was something... <laughs> and that's that, why like... there are barriers between the players and the fans. <laughs> that's why there's a legal process that I can't talk about. <laughs> and then you proceeded to nearly snap Colin half. Uh, I snapped myself in half. I banged my head so hard. I'll tell you what, running around on a football... They are massive, aren't they, football the big pitches? big things, yeah. The fitness required, even just to yeah. jog back to the centre circle. Well, it all came crashing down on, on Sunday, didn't it? When we were running out on Eastwood Towns ground, it's just massive. Oh, God. <laughs> when the you get to this age, face. oh, it's tough. They put me out on the wing for the first 20 minutes. I was just like, oh, How did God, you find it? It's really hard. It's much easier just plodding around up yeah. front like him. So I went up front. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up front and that was it I was happy could have lasted I would love to watch you play football now well they do it often don't they so yeah, I'm sure we'll play decent. again we had a lot of messages Marlon we've had to whittle them down because you, you genuinely are I think the most popular um, character we've oh, had on so you, far thank you um, uh, Ali Barron who's now living in Australia oh wow so as a former season to get older in the A block you seem to do some of your best work on that touchline down in front of us often more so than anywhere else on the pitch Yeah. numerous times with the ball right on the touchline you take it even closer to the line before bursting inside past the defender there were some great times watching Forrest and yourself and certainly the best in recent years did the A block spur you on to do that more or was it just a coincidence no A block spurred you on really yeah it's just well, I don't, so know, good. I don't I even know if I can to how to word it really um, it did uh, they just made you feel good. And they're, they're obviously, there's there's different types of passion. And yes. there's a aggressive passion that they had mm. on that side. It's not a bad thing, or I'm trying yeah, to yeah. say they're aggressive, but it was like, it was like it makes you like, it, yeah. made, it made me like want to uh, like tackle yeah. someone or chase someone down. And, and then when I chase someone down and, the, you know, like a left back and you're trying to win the ball off them, yeah. and when I win it off them, and then the, the, the A-bot just goes, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it just makes yeah. you like, yeah! It just makes you want to go crazy again. <laughs> makes you want to... So like, I used to like just love doing that. So every time I was chasing the ball, I would chase it and sometimes I used to smash someone, hurt them. But yeah. at the same time, that's a good thing for me because to let them know that I'm there. So if I win it, I win it. But if I smash them, I smash them. And then the A-bot was always there in that, in that corner. Yeah. I always try to aim for that corner and they used to just go mad and just makes me want to <laughs> even more so. used to do though, wasn't it? Yeah. It would raise a crowd. Yeah. You, go, you go and smash a winger yeah. in a 50-50, not to hurt anyone, but to put just him to, in row Z as, yeah. lo- uh, as well with the ball. You knew the A-block were just going to go, Whoa. Yeah, so that's, yeah, definitely. It made, that corner made me even more so, it inspired me to go and work even harder and, win the ball and then scoring going that side it just it's carnage over there yeah so good to hear Uh, Stuart Valens has got in touch now a few people have asked us about this he said you simply must ask him about the time he punched a linesman when celebrating (laughs) at the (laughs) sitting ground He said, I want to say it was Sheffield United, but I could be wrong. He scored at the bridge for then and ran down the touchline swinging his fist like Chris (laughs) Akabusi only to connect with a poor lino's jaw is this true? very true (laughs) And it's, so it's just uh, a total tonight. accident. Yeah, it started bleeding, nothing. <gasps> no. Yeah, because it was I celebrated down that side. Yeah. I can't I can't remember the score or what happened, and I was celebrating <laughs> down crazy like that. Going, yeah, yeah. going Shadow three boxing. or four times. And then I connected <laughs> with the linesman's nose. Oh. And was there any like no. sanction for it? No, 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 no. no. It he like probably like deserved it because you know the linesman. Pure he's probably coming over going, Can you stand standing? That's what he's doing. It was like was he? Oh, push yeah, up, well, he deserved me it. Then. Have some of that. Like, sod that. <laughs> so, Take that, mate. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Last time you do that, pal. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stuart also adds, P.S. I've been keeping an eye out for Paul McGregor sprinting down the banks of the canal in full pantaloon based regalia on my yes. cycle commute through Long Eaton. No luck yet. Uh, yeah, I love that canal run. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where people can see if they want if they want to if they want to spot you. Yeah, most mornings running down the canal. Good man. Yeah, love it. Now this is tr- this tricky thing with Twitter because sometimes people's Twitter handles aren't like a real name. But uh, at Lord L A W L L E D says not NFFC related. But can you ask Marlon about his time at? Oh no, I'm not going to be able to Guangzhou. 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 Yeah, RNF. China. Uh, I think I remember he's got some peculiar stories from his six month stint there. He says. Yeah. What kind? Well, what, 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 what kind have you got? <laughs> I don't know. What's, what's he want to know? I don't know. On, I, I, or, on or off the field? <laughs> <laughs> well, how so, so? I mean, what what was that experience like playing football in China? It was good. Yeah, it was very very good. I, I enjoyed my time. But um, they, was they looked it, after a me weird very well. Experience. Um, obviously, it's in a different country. Football is it takes you anywhere, and I was quite privileged to. Yeah. When someone asked me, I went. I thought, well, yeah, why not? I get to go into China, get to play football. 
and that was it really. And they, so we got promoted to the Super League. So all the team there, we went on a a wicked run, an unbeaten run, and we got promoted. Wow! And it was just a great time. And culturally, compared to you know going down ISIS and the market bar, yeah. was, was there a sort of Chinese equivalent that you would do? No, it, was, it was no different. Um, yeah. Obviously, they like having a few drinks and stuff, and they're going out party. Obviously, the language barrier <laughs> was a bit different because it's Mandarin and all different things. But they had, I had an interpreter that was with me, and he literally talked to everyone. And so he come around with you all the time. Yeah, and some of the lads spoke English, um, so we did communicate quite well. And did you learn any Mandarin or anything like that? Only a few, yeah, well, they taught, they, they stitched me up to be fair. <laughs> so, yeah. It, As you would. Yeah, come they on. always do. We do the same because if yeah. someone come over, we would tell them like, the normal normal words to say to someone and they go and say it and get punched in the face. <laughs> so they, they did the same to me and I almost got beaten up. So, but yeah, it's, it's good banter. Matt Dyson is a, is a, a friend of the show. Um, and he sent in this picture, and I've never seen this before, and I'm not sure if you've heard it. He said, can you ask Marlon if he ever got one of the Russian doll sets of himself and some other Forest players that were sold at a market stall in Prague in the mid-noughties? And he's attached a picture. Now, I can't tell, really, who the hell these people are meant to be. Should we have a go? Oh, I've seen that before. Because I know one of them's got to be Jono, definitely. Yeah. Do you reckon that one's Jono? Yeah. And the only reason I say that is because of the facial hair. And that's probably me. Yeah. And then who are these two, then? Because that looks that a bit like... That looks sort of more classic 70s era. That one. The one in yeah. blue looks like Clint Boone. Clint Boone from the Inspiral Carpet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we will put this out on Twitter so that people That's can see. It's four Russian them. dolls. Is Ernie one of them? I think I've is seen Robert Earnshaw one. Ah, yes, I think one of them is Earnshaw. One of them does, but then... The smaller one's got to be. <laughs> yes. So then Marlon's the big one, then Earnshaw. And then these two could just be anyone, couldn't they? I think that's Florence Nightingale and, um, <laughs> and Clint I Boone. I've seen them before on Twitter. <laughs> I think that's John O'Hare. But you, have you ever seen them in the flesh? Well, no. in the wood. No, I've seen them on Twitter before. <laughs> Did you, you never got any image rights from the Prague market scene? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly, though, a, a portent of things to come because it was a wraparound design and that's ended up what you ended up doing to cars. So maybe there's a... I see you did there. Similarity. Some, something, nice. in the, something there. Uh, now, we always... Um, uh, I'm not sure if you had this too much in your era, Marlon, but the old fact-file questions that footballers would get asked in magazines about okay. favourite things and things like that. Um, so what's your favourite film? My favourite film, yeah. uh, Gladiator. Oh, great choice. Mm. Biggest fear or phobia? I don't, I don't like cheese is my thing. It gives me <laughs> migraine. Not... <laughs> so I don't, You're wanna... not scared of it though, are you? No, but <laughs> I want, I want, that's probably, I'm not, I ain't got really got that fears. A life without cheese. But Imagine not... that, Matt. Well, I can't. I mean, look at me. Well, Firstly, yeah. David Prutton on the last episode said baked beans. Now, cheese and baked beans are two of the best Pre-match things. Pre-match must be a nightmare for you two, then. Big time. Yeah. <laughs> Dry pasta. <laughs> <laughs> no cheese. <laughs> Which brings us on to this one. Favourite food? Favourite food? Um, I don't know. I'm a bit of a yard food. Do you know what yard food is? Yeah. Caribbean food. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rice and pea and oxtail. Oh, lovely. Mate, remember when all the boys... Like, all the time. When Butler. Jay, used, when yeah, Jay yeah. first was... Oh, Forgot about Jace. Jason Lee. Yeah. Andre Salensi. Jay used to get it and got the club to get all this... Uh, Caribbean food um, for the bus for the away games. Oh, it was heaven, mate. On the way back, rice and peas, and things we used chicken to do. Is great, to be great isn't it? Like, oh god, I don't think you'd be able to do that now. Stop and get yard food. But we had <laughs> not that bad for you, though, right? Not, surely the dumplings, yeah. the seven dumplings, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's better than battered sausage and chips, isn't it? Yes, There's at least some yes. nutritional benefit. Oh, rice yeah. and peas, I've had that for ages. Nice. Favorite drink. Favorite drink. Amaretto and cranberry juice. Oh, animal! For... I'm a wine person. I like red wine. Oh, I love red wine. I sent to Paul the other week. I really, really got into port lately. Yeah, I like port for Christmas time. Oh, port it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my word! We should do like a port special. <laughs> <laughs> Just sit here and do a whole episode over a, over a bottle of port. Now we 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 dug out an old uh, forest program um, that had. Some of these questions put to Paul. I'm going to do some different oh, ones now okay. and see if they match up. And I'll put the same questions to you as well, Marlon. Um, if you ruled the world for a day, what would you do? God, you're asking Paul or me? I'll ask you first. Oh, God. That's a, yeah, good questions. I haven't really thought about things like this. What would I do for the day? <laughs> yeah, if you ruled the world. Get us in the Premier League, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had a good go, Jesus. to be fair. Yeah. Fly to the moon. Is that something you could do? Yeah. For the day? That's great. Yeah. yeah. So you'd rule the world. with Elon Musk yeah. and get him <laughs> yeah. one of his rockets. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
You'd rule the world musky, and musky leave mate. it. Musky. <laughs> Any chance? Do you remember the answer you gave, Paul, and what would your answer be now? Oh, what, oh no, what did I say by then? Goodness. He says, you get all your mates, a load of girls, and head off to the desert island in the first question for a 24-hour party. What's that? <laughs> he said he'd go to a desert island party. with his mates and a load of girls for a 24-hour party. Hadn't I just mentioned previously that I would take my girlfriend you to said yeah. party? Yeah, yeah. I wonder how she'd feel about that. Well, we're going to get her on the next show. <laughs> a full hour with Paul McGregor's ex-girlfriends. Yeah. Hi, Sarah. Hope you well. So what would you do? What would you do if, if you ruled the w- world for a day now? Yeah, you just maybe change my mind about that, really. It's obviously having world peace and stuff like that. It's, uh, ruled the w- I, I took that question to a different level. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was being a bit selfish there. Which That's is, good uh, to be selfish, mate. Most well, of I've taken it full circle now, so... Yeah, I, you're I'm, making me thinking about it now. I'm having Ibiza now, so... <laughs> we've got Ibiza so you, for the day, Mark, so, so changed let's do it. Yeah. Our decisions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh right, okay. So this is interesting because this would be this is now a retro question. But during your time at Forest, who had the best and who had the worst dress sense in the dressing room? Oh God, Spuggy texted me earlier, by the way, to say give Maul some stick about um, when he used to keep all his tags on his clothes. Oh, Machino. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a London thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if he'd kill me, Skip, Stuart Pearce. <laughs> yeah, really bad yeah, dresser. Yeah. Oh. So what he just sort of stuff... didn't care, did he? Nah, just he's just. So what sort of stuff is he wearing? I don't know. He's just wearing he's just wearing his trousers by his boobs. And... <laughs> like Simon Cowell. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty old school to be fair. So no, um, Piercy was he was the worst. Who was the best? To be fair, the lads dressed quite well. Bartman was good. Yeah. Colin was very smart yeah. all the time. What about Macca? Because he gets some stick now for these sort of fifty. Macca looks. No, Macca looks good now. Yeah. Back then. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> Ooh. Hey. Hey. So just describe it what... The, it's the rock star in him. I don't know if it's still there. <laughs> yeah. it, it, you obviously know, like, rock star, they obviously they dress dirty and yeah. they, like, they look... That's my impressions yeah. of them. They don't really care. Leather trousers, rip stuff and... Yeah. I never wore leather t-shirts trousers. T-shirts hanging, like, round your neck, off your arm and... Yeah. He was with holes in... Like he was that sort of person, but he looks totally reformed. Reformed <laughs> <laughs> character. He looks looks really good now. So yeah, in that dressing room, Mako would have been my worst. Oh, um, it, yes. listen, it depends on what band I was into at the time. Yeah, exactly. See, there you go. <laughs> yeah. What year? What year was that? Would you say? Oh God, now you're thinking. What was it? What year would 90... that have been? Ninety nine, two thousand, ninety eight. Ninety eight. Was it ninety eight? So it would have been I... the end of the sort of oasis here wouldn't it? you'd have been getting into harder stuff then I reckon yeah you'd have, you'd have been re- you'd have been in the post be here now rebellion phase <laughs> and you'd have been going like metal yeah yeah grunge my, that sort of dress yeah 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 that's what he was like yeah I'm just watching you try and remember you're going through the roller decks of all the ludicrous I am, outfits I've certainly cast away oasis by be here now so um, did you ever go through sort of like the darkness phase like sort of uh, oh know, no sp- spandex onesies no 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 just wondering who that Mankinis? Uh, do you know what? I think we were listening at the time. I thought you could say, do you know what? Yeah, I did wear a mankini. Yeah. No, I, can't, I can't remember. I'll get back to you on that. Your, uh, your answer at the time, by the way, is that the worst is Malcolm Market Boy Rigby. Remember Rig- uh, Riggers. Malks. <laughs> oh, my God. He was a bit of a tramp, to be fair. <laughs> a little bit. Being serious, because he's, yeah, he didn't really care. <laughs> were you there when he drank that entire bottle of whiskey? Yeah. What? Yeah, in in about a minute. That's why I say he's a bit. He was a bit of a bit wild. He's a strange tramp. fruit, Mal. Not, not, not being rude he towards tramps, lad. please. Yeah. Uh, it's just, <laughs> just, uh, Sorry, Mal. Yeah. yeah. Just how he was yeah, as a Paul person. Used to dress like once. Like, yeah, he dresses and stuff. He didn't wow. Really look after himself. You thought a professional footballer would look after themselves and yeah, carry I themselves he... well and dress half decent. <laughs> he did not care. He was funny, man. Uh, you said the best is a close contest between Colin Cooper and Scott Gemmell. There you go. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I mean, Scott used to go do a lot of stuff together, obviously. So we'd go shopping and he, he was into like, he, he was a smarter version. So we'd like similar brands, but he'd always be like really quite clean Prada sort yeah. of yeah, Ralphie, Scotty. really nice, smart kit. Oh. But he'd wear it a bit quite indie. So I, I liked the way he dressed. And, and Coops was similar, to be fair. Coop's quite a handsome man, wasn't he? Naturally handsome, would you say? Yeah, he's quite clean cut. Yeah. He looked after himself, looked 
fresh all the time. And that sort of little mm. curl at the front that used to flop down onto his forehead. Sometimes. All right, get a room. Oh, no, I just that's thought right. you looked cool as a kid. I was yeah, like, that's why cool. I said Colin. <laughs> <laughs> really cool, yeah, curly hair. Uh, Marlon, this has absolutely flown by. It has, hasn't it? Can't thank Good you enough for coming in. No, you're welcome. Happy to get you on again, Mike. We, we'd love to have you on again. There's so much. It's, we've barely scratched the surface. You have, you have. But it means a lot that you would come up from London to, to spend time with us to do yeah, this. So thank, thank you, you so much. You're very welcome. And congratulations in having such a great career after football and, and well, obviously still being involved, but the work you're doing, it sounds with yeah, the current you. football no, is really, good. really I important. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Cheers, Marlon. Top man. Nice one, Marlon. Cheers.